A functional group is a set of atoms in a molecule that are bonded in a specific pattern, and this specific pattern of atoms dictates the properties of the molecule, such as what temperature does it melt, what temperature does it boil, and it also dictates the reactivity of the molecule as well. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to recognize, I think, 11 different functional groups, maybe 12 different functional groups. Uh, and this can be a little bit tricky because a lot of the functional groups have a lot of atoms in common, so it takes a little bit of practice to be able to tell them apart. In the first molecule, we're looking at an example of an alkene functional group. The alkene functional group is, uh, involves a carbon atom that is double bonded to another carbon atom. So I'm highlighting the part of the molecule that represents this functional group, the alkene. The rest of the molecule I am not highlighting, and the reason for that is because only this part of the molecule is what dictates calling it an alkene. So the other things that I've drawn on this molecule, they don't matter. They could change from one molecule to the next. All that we're looking at is the alkene, the carbon-carbon double bond. So, you know, this could be a CH3, or this could be a bromine, or this could be an oxygen, whatever. As long as we have a carbon-carbon double bond, it's an alkene. The next one over, which is pretty similar, this has a carbon-carbon triple bond, and this functional group is called the alkyne. It's got a very similar name, alkyne. And again, I'm not highlighting these parts because these parts out here are interchangeable. It doesn't matter what they are. The presence of the carbon-carbon triple bond is all that matters, and we get to call it an alkyne. The next one I'm showing in a line structure, um, even though line structures are still pretty new because it's just hard to draw in a, like a Lewis structure. And this, we're looking at this ring right here. So this ring is the functional group. This is a ring of six carbon atoms with alternating single and double bonds as we go around the ring. This particular functional group is referred to as aromatic. It could also be referred to as aryl, only that's not quite so common, um, or it could be referred to as benzene. Benzene is actually the name of a molecule, um, but sometimes we do refer to this as the benzene functional group. And again, it doesn't matter what's actually attached to the outside of this ring. All that matters is this particular specific pattern. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky because you might notice that this particular pattern has got the alkyne or alkene in it. It has carbon-carbon double bonds, but we don't refer to this as alkenes. Alkenes would just be one carbon-carbon double bond all by itself. And if we have these three carbon-carbon double bonds in this very specific pattern in a ring alternating with single bonds, then we call it aromatic instead of calling it alkene. Now the rest of the functional groups are gonna be a little bit more complicated. This molecule here that I've drawn actually has two functional groups in it. So we're gonna do two at once. The first functional group that we're looking at has this carbon oxygen double bond with a hydrogen attached on one side. This functional group is called an aldehyde aldehyde. And what's over here on this side, it doesn't matter. This could be another hydrogen atom or like I've drawn here, a carbon atom makes no difference. This specific pattern makes it an aldehyde. Now this one right here, we have another carbon carbon double bond, but this one is bonded to a carbon on each side. So a carbon carbon double bond with a carbon on each side, it's very specific. This is called a ketone ketone has to have a carbon atom on each side. This next one, which also is pretty similar, so a few of these in a row that are pretty similar, this is a carbon-oxygen double bond with an oxygen atom that has a hydrogen atom. So it's very specific. This is called a carboxylic acid. That's two words, carboxylic acid. It has to be a carbon atom with a double bond to an oxygen and a single bond to an oxygen that's also attached to a hydrogen. The one next to it looks pretty similar. So this is a carbon-oxygen double bond attached to an oxygen, not attached to a hydrogen, attached to something else. This we call an ester. There. So here's, this is seven of them. And these are very tricky to tell apart, all of these ones involving carbon-carbon double bonds, because there's a lot of similarity to them. So here we have another one with a carbon-oxygen double bond. This one is attached to a nitrogen. 
This functional group is called an amide. It's pronounced amide. It looks like we should call it amide, but it's pronounced amide. And it doesn't matter what's attached to the nitrogen out here. We just need to have a carbon oxygen double bond attached to a nitrogen. The next functional group is just a nitrogen. Um, and it could have other stuff on it. it. doesn't really matter what it is. This we call an amine. Now, this is a little bit tricky. Like I said, these are tricky because this has a nitrogen in it as well. So why are we not calling this an amine? Why do we call it an amide? Well, when the nitrogen is attached to the carbon oxygen double bond, that's a particular set of atoms bonded in a specific way and it gets its own name amide. So an amine is a nitrogen bonded to something, just not this, not that, it could be anything else. So next we have an oxygen, oops, we have an oxygen that is bonded to a hydrogen and a carbon. And whatever else we have out here doesn't matter at all. This is an alcohol. We also have a carbon atom that's bonded to a chlorine. This we refer to as an alkyl halide, halide for halogen. And this chlorine doesn't have to be a chlorine. It could be a bromine, it could be a fluorine, it could be an iodine, it could be any one of the halogen molecules on the or halogen atoms on the periodic table. Last but not least, we have an oxygen atom that is in between two carbon atoms. This is called an ether.